Well, the crowd have really decided that victory is theirs, haven't they? Well, Charlton to Kidd. Best Charlton in the middle, so too is Aston. Charlton, another! He's got another! Nine minutes gone, and this must be it now. 99 minutes, and Bobby Charlton has done it. What a sensational eight minutes. He began the move, and there's the Charlton shot on our remote camera. Brilliant effort. This is by United. We don't even look at Georgie Best, we look at the referee. for this great man and Will Franken is applauding him as he comes out on the pitch Jackie Crompton the trainer and here comes the man that they would have for Prime Minister President and everything and Matt Busby going first to Benfica and what a tremendous what a tremendous thing to do to go straight to Benfica and now to his own plan and to Bobby Charlton the Champions Cup was theirs It was a night of unashamed tears and triumph. It had taken so long and cost so much. It would have been much worse had it been had I been injured the week before. By the time it came round, I knew it was out. And after the disappointment, I thought it was there, it was not as great. Where physically were you that night? I was in St. Joseph Hospital in Manchester, watching it on telly, lad. <laughs> I, I tended to think that everyone seemed to relax a little bit afterwards instead of striving to achieve a little bit more they seemed to the, the thinking maybe the, and I don't I don't suppose anyone said will come out and said was that we've achieved what we set out to achieve and, and that's it uh, instead of going on we should have won the European Cup for the next five six years and we didn't United tried manfully to defend the trophy next season but were 2 nil down for the home leg of the semi-final against AC Milan best Best again. Brilliant football. Charlton. Yeah! Have you ever seen a scene like that? Manchester United are alive again. Charlton again. Best. That's Kid to Craddon. Yes, it's there. It was there. And the referees let it go. Surely that was over the line. And the referee says no. It was over the line. The French referee was no more than a few yards away. Let play go on. Now, that was about 20 minutes to go. That would have been 2-2. We'd have beat Milan. And then we'd have met uh, Ajax in the final. Now, at that time, they were nothing because uh, Milan went on to beat them 4-1, I think, in the final in Madrid. Uh, so we were that far away from getting the European Cup final again. The European triumph had brought a knighthood for Sir Matt Busby, but was also a watershed. Wilf McGuinness took over when Sir Matt retired, but although he took United to three cup semi-finals in two seasons, they lost. Law was 30, Charlton 32, and best a goldfish in a shrinking bowl. They bought badly in those days as well. They, they, they panicked uh, when the results started going against them. Uh, and they bought players who I didn't consider were good enough for Manchester United. When, when good players were available. Uh, because I had players coming to me and, um, and almost begging uh, to sign for Manchester United. Look, players like Alan Ball, he was available. Uh, Mike England, who was available. And they personally said to me, we, we want to play for Manchester United. And for whatever reason, they weren't signed. 
Frustration and impetuosity got best sent off against Scotland, and his critics gloated that yesterday's hero now had feet of clay. Because people built George up to be uh, so great, they were very quickly out to pull him down when he made mistakes, and we all make mistakes, and George was uh, pulled down whenever he could by certain people. They looked out and had a go at him. But it was the time when Bobby uh, was married, went home, Dennis married, went home, and George was single, and that's the main reason, I think, that he had this uh, nightclub bug. Uh, I think other people did it, and other players, but they weren't George Best, and they weren't interesting to the, the press and the media. While Best cultivated his bad boy image, Charlton's glittering international career was extending into its 13th and final year. The goal's flow had never ceased. This one against the Soviet Union helped England win third place in the 1968 European Championship. And a major landmark now approached. Bobby Charlton, England's captain for the night, playing in his 100th international for his country, waits to make his sentimental journey across the Wembley Stadium. A stadium he's graced so often with distinction Charlton is among a rare number of British sportsmen whose attitudes, as well as their achievements, have elevated them to a place of permanent affection in the hearts of the world. Sir Alf Ramsey knew his value to the World Cup in Mexico. Ah, uh, Bobby. Bobby has been a credit to the game. Uh, a credit to himself, a credit to the game, and uh, will always be uh, remembered as such. And I, I would have thought that this particular player uh, has more effect throughout the world than any other player uh, throughout the world. Uh, possibly with the ex exception of Pelle. Carlos Alberto, that's dangerous. Giardino, already left two for standing. Pelle! What a save! Scott Bass! Take that out of the net! Costao. Lebones was the man in the way. Paulo Cesar. Costal. And more beaten for once, but back again. Pele! Gaisino! Number two. And it's there! Peters. England were 2 0 up in the quarter final against West Germany, but had just conceded a goal when Charlton was substituted. It was his 106th and last cap. It's a popular simplification to blame his departure for England's subsequent 3 2 defeat, but Charlton himself sees the absence of goalkeeper Gordon Banks as more crucial. At that particular time, Gordon Banks was unquestionably the greatest goalkeeper in the world by miles. I mean, he was almost unbeatable. I mean, we used to practice, when we were practice shooting in Mexico where the ball flies very fast. I mean, he used to stagger us. You know, he, he, even hardened players, you know, that had seen it all, and they were saying, dear me, that, that's almost, he, he was making impossible saves, impossible saves. So I think the mere fact that he went down with a tummy upset the day of the only sudden death match that we had, really, I think was uh, was a big contribution. People say that uh, that Alf Ramsey substituting me was was the crucial factor, but I would I would rather say it was it was Gordon Banks because they could have done without me, but but he he at that particular time was so good I thought it was a replacement. What a loss that Best never played in a World Cup. This goal against England was one of nine in 37 internationals for Northern Ireland, and in all competitions for United he scored 167. Best is up front. There he is, the defence split. Can he do it? He surely must. Banks being driven left. And was that a foul? The whistle hasn't gone. Best. And a foul given. 
fascinating piece of football thinking by Best. An old Best footballing player and sheer impudence there to see. Whether the referee saw it or not. Very questionable, really, whether it was fair or not. George West. Dowling moving ahead of him. Kidd on the left. The long cross, although McElroy now moving to the near post. Best! Charlton. Best! <laughs> Kidd on the far post. Best near in! Uncontainable on the field, Best was increasingly uncontrollable off it. Sir Matt soothed the troubled waters when he returned to replace McGuinness, and Frank O'Farrell briefly revived Best's career when he took over in 1971. But in the middle of the 72-73 season, with United facing relegation, Best ran away to the sunshine of Marbella. As he relaxed, United lost 5-0 and called a crisis meeting. O'Farrell was sacked, and Manchester was a divided city. I think it's a good job that George Best is packed in football. He's causing the club a lot of embarrassment. I think he's great, George Best. I just think there's a lot of jealousy. He's a good footballer, but outside of being a footballer... Uh, I, I wouldn't be the same without him. I wish he was still back there, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I think he's behaved abominably. I think he's treated the team as a team terribly. Best player United have ever had, best. Yeah, yeah. definitely. To put, him the to put him the point of the trouble for United is rubbish. The big culprits are United, the directors. Let's not be fair about this when you're talking about old Farrell. He picked the team and he picked the worst team ever for last Saturday. Then he got beat 5 nothing without Georgie Best. Look how many chances Best has had and look how many chances old Farrell's had. He's had none. And I've always liked George Best, but I think he's got away with murder. Uh, I don't think Farrell should have been sacked for him. I had a thrombosis while I was in Marbella and had to uh, fly back immediately and was taken straight into hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, the nice thing was the first person to come and see me was Sir Matt. And uh, he just, he came in, said hello to me and we spoke for about 10, 15 minutes. And when he left, he said, it's about time you got back playing, isn't it? Best did return to a United side now managed by Tommy Doherty, but bereft of both Law and Charlton and played a dozen times in the season that ended in United's relegation to Division Two. I always gave 100% to Manchester United when I actually played for them. I might have done a lot of things wrong off the field, but when I played for the club, I, gave, I always gave 100%. Not only in playing, but in training. I mean, people today tend to think that I didn't like training. I love training, and I love being fit. And I trained, I, I trained harder than anybody, because I felt that I had to train a little bit extra to make up for the, the couple of beers I used to have the night before. <laughs> Bobby Charlton had retired gracefully at the end of the previous season. His last match at Chelsea is 708th in United's colours. Sadly, Dennis Law's departure at the same time left a taste of bitterness. The King unexpectedly given a free transfer after 11 years of blinding service. Now you're for United to best. Well, you're coming back with him. Best with this perfect balance. Again, a lost goal. It's all level. His 30 goals for Scotland is a record shared with Kenny Dalgleish. Pat Rice holding off the challenge, giving it straight to Lorimer and Jennings out of his goal. This is a real chance. Law! What had fashioned this one sickly looking kid into the fearless footballer that he was? As a man, he, I think he's a loner. I don't think that he likes to mix very much at all. And I feel that he's got uh, quite a large family, apparently. I think if he... He likes to go home, stay at home. He doesn't gallivant. And I would say that he's a loner, but above all, he's honest. Well, I'll tell you what, you're good, that's... You're good. That's money, it's tea time. Who's making the tea? See, put me near that. I'll hide the bum. I don't want... It's debatable if anybody was better than him. He was a brilliant player. Maybe Lawton could get up higher because he was a bigger man. Uh, but all the rest of the, the tricks, the cunning tricks and the tricks that would cause trouble, Law knew them. He knew them when he was a boy. 
Discarded by Doherty, Law crossed Manchester to his old club City for one last season of league football. Aimed at Bell, who got there, Law! 